All right, so let's implement the strafe. I have the mechanic working with the input actions, which again, depending on what, if you code it yourself or you buy an asset, you'll have set this up already. But we need the animations to play because this looks really weird when he's still in his regular locomotion state. So regardless of how you implement it, all you're really going to need to do is turn a Boolean on and off. So for the asset that I purchased in the blueprint component, they have these nice, oops, um, let me scroll down, these custom events that I will add logic to, and it's a very simple. All I'm gonna do is create a new variable, and I'll call it is locked on, and then I will set it to true or false depending on the situation. So, if the target is not found, we set it to false. So if you press a button but no enemy is nearby, this makes sure that it your character will enter a strafe without any enemy there. And then if the target locked, we set it on to true, obviously. And then target unlocked, we set it back to false. So then a lot of times I'll just hit hit C and then I'll do just so it's easier to read. So now let's go to the animation blueprint because this is where we will implement the strafing. So what we can do is right after this sequence here, we can get the, we'll link the animations like how we did with the falling. So let's create a new variable and we'll call it locked on. Again, you name it super similar so that you can know what's going on. We will set it to be whatever the character is doing. So grab it, grab our player ref, and then we'll get is locked on, get is locked on, and then we link it. So now this is inheriting all the logic from all this right here because we just linked it let's do the animations so we have our main locomotion here and there are two different ways you can do it i'll show you the quick way first and then i'll show you the longer but more fleshed out way second so we can do the blend posed by bool again and then we can use this is locked on so whenever you are locked on, you want to play the lock on idle. And when you're not locked on, you want to play your regular idle. So let's do. All right. So let me quickly show you this. He's in his regular idle. I lock on and boop. Nice. Now this may work and be what you need. However, you'll notice that he pops because I wanted to go with a different idol. Um, and you can't do this if you do blend pose by pool. So what we'll do instead is we'll do different states. So what we'll do is we'll drag off here, add state. This will be the strafe idol. Then from the strafe idol, it will transition into the regular strafe. Okay, so strafe idle, I'll plug that in. Oops. Awesome. Oops, and then the strafe here, we'll need a blend space. So let's go ahead and set that up now. Go to our strafing folder. Uh, let's see, animation. We want just the regular blend space. Here we go. And let's see, where's Manny? Let's say strafe. Okay. Now this one's going to be a little bit different than the one we had set up before. And that's because we are dealing with not just one axis, but we're dealing with two. So you'll notice there's this vertical one here and the horizontal one. So the vertical one will do the speed. So just so we can keep track of things, let's call it speed. And then the horizontal one will handle the direction. So let's do that. Now the direction, we need it to go full degree. So 180 to 180. And then the speed, this will be, again, it's the max walk speed. So it will depend on how fast your game is. You know, Bloodborne's a lot faster than, say, like Dark Souls 1. So it depends on your game style. But um, let's just, for now, you can put in some numbers. I'll do 300 for the max and then 100 for the lowest. Because, again, the idle will handle um, when it's at zero. 
All right, you wanna make sure you turn on snap to grid. So we'll have backwards up at the top here. So plug in your backwards one, and it goes on this side, and it also goes on the end. And then this one will be our forward in the center, which could be your strafe or it could be your run cycle. And oops. And then we'll do our left over here. And then our right here. Um, and you can have, uh, I didn't animate them, but you can have faster ones for here and then slower ones for there. Um, just so that it's more, your animation is a little bit more fleshed out. Um, so you may want to edit your max walk speed while strafing if you're doing more Elden Ring style. I think Bloodborne and the other ones, they kept the speed basically the same, but the, I'll show you in case you want to edit your speed while strafing. You'll see how uh, this is the normal one, and if I run, then I go a little bit faster, and I can do the same thing by strafing. I have this slow strafe speed. Again, I wouldn't do it this slow. I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes, and then you can hold it and run faster, and then those speeds are slightly different than this speed right here. So if that is something you want, there are a few things you need to do. You need to set a max walk speed for strafing. And you can do that by adding it into your stamina component. I don't know why I called it stamina, but you can add your stamina here when you eventually do code it with all the speed. So I have a strafe speed and then a strafe running speed. And what I do is when you lock on, you set the strafe speed to just the regular standard strafe speed, which is this one here. But if you hold the run, you gotta make sure you do that in the run. So for the strafe, you would do a branch if you're locked on. If you are locked on, then you do the strafe run speed. If you are locked on, if you, if you are not, then you do just your regular sprint speed. And then this remains the same because the run speed is, is constant. And then similar thing, you want to do it with target unlocked. When you set the boolean back to false, you want to make sure you, just to be safe, set your run speed back to the standard character speed your character moves in. Okay, so then let me plug in the strafe here. And I will need to plug in the direction the speed like before, so let's get that. Round speed, ta-da. And where is the direction one? Oh, I guess I forgot I need to add the direction. Um, so we need to tell Unreal where the direction is. Okay, so for getting the direction, we need to know um, the velocity and all this stuff here. So I need to drag all this down to create some room. Awesome. So let's set a variable here, direction, which is a float. And I'll put it in under here. Okay, awesome. So um, what we need to do is take the velocity, plug it in to calculate the direction. And then we're getting the actors, uh, the, where the character is facing through get owning actor and get actor rotation. And then we set this and then let's just set it to true after the ground speed. So now we have the direction. Um, let's go back to here, ground speed, direction. Okay, awesome. So we've plugged in our animations, but we need rules in order to go into them. So let's think about it. If you want your idle to idle, the only thing you really need is if locked on is true right? Because you're already in the idle. So that should be good to go. If you're idling, you need to go to the strafe. Same thing we need is locked on. We also need a ground speed because we're dealing with speed. Um, so actually we can use the should move. So let's get an and. Okay. So what we'll do is if they're locked on and you should move. If both of those are true, then you can go into the state. And so that works this way, but we need to make sure that the this is also working. Let's go back in here, copy these, paste them. We want, should move to be false, so we want a not. Let me see how I handle this. 
not boolean, I think. So should not move and you're all locked on, you can do that. And then the idle to idle will be if you're not locked on. Basically, if you figure out the direction, um, the rule for one way, you just flip it and invert it for the rule back. And then that's how you're able to do it. Okay, compile, save, let's see if it worked. There you go. And yeah, we got that uh, very funny animation from my cartoony game with the valet, so it looks really weird. But that it's working, so that's good. Um, now, one thing I did want to point out is to fix this jarring. We need a transition, so let's add that back. Let's see where to go. Let's see. So we want it to be between these two. So let's add a state. And we'll call it idle transition. And then let's see. I believe we can do that. And I think let's see. Okay, awesome. So that animation's plugged in. Oh, there we go. And for this one, we just want it to transition to the strafe without any specific rules because it's just a passing through, right? This is the one that really determines it, and we just want to continue it. So if we do automatic rule based on transition, it should flow. So now if I lock on. You'll see he does this little step, which is nice, and I can literally do the same thing in reverse for him going back. Link does that, and I think it's a really nice touch. I just don't have the time to animate it, but you get the idea. And what's also nice about this setup that we did is we can jump while we're strafing because we did it in our cache locomotion pose, what the jump uh, connects to from outside. So because our strafing is all in here, we can still do all our jumping and everything like that. So I hope that was helpful. Have fun with this. Um, if you found it helpful, please like and subscribe. And as always, happy animating, guys. I'll see you in the next lesson.